example, there's a gym in Denmark where you pay for a membership, but they refund your money as long as you show up once a week. Now, that's a terrific idea, but most gyms aren't going to offer this. They're, of course, happier if you pay for a membership and then you don't sweat all over their equipment. So how do you motivate yourself? Well, here's one way to get yourself to the gym. Do a financial reality check to consider the cost of not going. Each month, not going means that you've wasted your membership money without getting anything in return. And any additional costs like a private training session or workout clothes that you've already bought, that's even more cost. And those come without any benefits gained by you. So tally up the total amount that you've spent for a little bit of shock effect that gets you over there. And in this context, I think that pre-committing yourself to a personal trainer is a great idea. It's not great despite the cost of money. It's actually great because of the money that you put on the line. And you can put money on the line even more explicitly. Some colleagues of mine at Yale started a website called Stick K with two Ks. Now, here's how it works. You define your own goal. Like, let's say I want to lose 10 pounds by the end of April. Then you load, say, 200 bucks onto the site with your credit card. Then if you don't meet your goal, they keep your money. And if you do meet your goal, the money gets returned to you. Now, this is a great idea because you're putting something on the line, money, that stings if you lose it. Now, there's a closely related idea here that's fascinating. So there was a woman who was featured on Radiolab a few years ago because she really wanted to quit smoking. She was socially very liberal and had participated in a lot of the foundational civil rights movements and had founded the Congress on Racial Equality in the 1960s. But she couldn't quit smoking and felt so terrible that she had smoked through her two pregnancies. And so she told her best friend, here is a check for $10,000. And if you catch me smoking again, I want you to donate this check to the KKK. Now, this was her most despised organization. And this is what's known as an anti-charity. What she was doing was pitting these neural networks against one another. Of course she wants the cigarette, but now she has to counterbalance that with how much it would hurt her if her money funded a group that's so politically offensive to her. And it worked. She didn't smoke anymore. So a financial sting can fence in your behavior, and this works even better when there's social pressure. And that leads us to the third lesson, which is recruit social pressure. All of this works better when your friends and colleagues can be there to make sure that you follow through with promises. Why? Because we have brain networks that really care what other people think. So coming back to this website, Stick K, once you've set your goal, let's say you want to lose 10 pounds and you've set the stakes, $200, you then add a referee who will judge whether you've met the goal or not. And you add friends to support you. So you're recruiting social pressure this way. And by the way, you know, even though social media gets a bad rap for most things, it has been shown in studies to be really helpful with this issue of recruiting the social support that you need. So a lot of people use social media to good effect when they're trying to diet. They write things like, hey, I've passed the 200 pounds goal and I'm on to my next goal of 190 pounds. And all their friends comment and they say things like, great job and keep going. And that sort of feedback really helps. Everyone likes to bag on social media, but a recent study out of the University of Georgia concluded that it's really helpful when people are trying to lose weight. Because when people join social media, they have the impression that they're being constantly watched, and so the self-control increases. And this is all related to another strategy that people find success with, which is committing themselves to social embarrassment if they don't do something. So you know these fitness boot camps where you sign up and you run around with a group of other people early in the morning and you get yelled at and you get in great shape. But if you don't show up one morning, everyone jogs to your front lawn and does jumping jacks and push-ups and screams your name until you come out. Now, why would anybody sign up for this? It's because it's a really smart idea. You are recruiting 
social pressure so that you can stick with your goals, so that you can steer your behavior in the direction that you want when you're thinking about the long term, about who you want to be.